this lesson, we're going to take a look at restraints and some basic principles behind using them. And when we talk about restraints, we want to focus on two things. Number one, always take them seriously and don't take them lightly. And number two, remove them as soon as possible. You are literally restraining a person. It's not like keeping them from injuring themselves. You are essentially keeping them from moving. So really think about this, especially from like a humanist perspective. This is a human that you are literally restraining. So take them seriously and take them off as soon as possible. But let's also look at why we use restraints. First, we use them from a safety standpoint. We want to make sure that the patient is being safe. If you have a patient that has like um, an endotracheal tube or some sort of really important drain, like a chest tube um, or some central line, you want to make sure that they don't reach up and pull it out. So those are exact like a, a primary reason that we do it. So again, it's about safety. The other one is uh, like delirium. There's some patients um, that are delirious, there's like ICU delirium, there's um, age associated delirium. This is another reason that you also would want to use restraints. And again, it comes back to the safety issue. The other reason that you would want to use restraints is to protect ourselves. We want to make sure that we're not put in harm's way by, by like a combative patient. So if you think that you, that your patient is posing an immediate harm to themselves or others, then you, this is, would be a justified reason to use restraint. If they intend to hurt themselves or others, if they're suicidal, these are reasons that you could potentially uh, restrain them. And just because you have a reason to justify a restraint, it doesn't mean that you can. It doesn't give you an automatic pass to, hey, I think they're going to hurt themselves. I need to restrain them. There are, you basically have to prove that they need to be restrained and that, got, that you have a good reason and that you have hoops to jump through and documentation. And we're going to talk about that later. But first off, let's look at different types of restraints. We have two different types of restraints. So you, we have physical restraints. And then you also have chemical restraints. And for the most part, we're going to talk about physical restraints right now. So physical restraints are restraints that, um, that look at, that literally restrain your patient physically. Um, they keep them from pulling out lines. So you have mitts, posy vests, uh, soft wrists and enclosure beds. So the posy vest is, let's go to our little guy here. It's literally a vest kind of goes like this and there's a tie in the front and the tie ties down to the side rails down here. That's a posy. And what it does is it keeps your patient from getting out of bed. So that would be kind of your first patient. So if you have a patient that is trying to literally get out of bed, but isn't going to pull out lines or harm themselves, then you can use something like a posy. Your next one is your mitts. Mitts look like big fancy boxing gloves. They are, they go over this and they have a strap on them and it, and it's just a safe way to keep them from harming themselves, but they still have like free reign of their arms. There's another one called a soft wrist restraint and it literally looks like, I'll show you a picture here in a little bit, but it's this restraint that goes around and it's got a safety strap and, and a tie and they go around the wrist and they tie. And what, what they do is they keep your patient from grabbing. So let's say your patient's intubated up here. It keeps them from moving their arm upward. Um, Occasionally you have to, it's kind of the standard for, for most of these. And occasionally you'll get something called a four point restraint. These are your extremely combative patients that are trying to kick you. Um, I've been threatened to be threatened to be uh, kicked in the head before. Um, it was actually kicked in the head and that patient got four point restraints. So your restraints, your soft wrist restraints are going to be these. The thing that's really important to remember with your soft wrist restraints is they can't go to the bed rail because what happens is the bed rail goes up and down. If it's attached to the bed rail and it's super tight and that bed rail drops, you're actually going to, you can really hurt your patient's arm, like especially up in the shoulder. Or if it's at a line, you can actually dislodge a line. You don't want to do that. So you need to make sure that there, there's typically on your bed, on your hospital bed, you're going to have little hooks that are, oops, sorry guys. You're going to have little hooks here and here. And what those do is those are places to attach your, um, your soft wrist restraints. But again, you don't want to do that. The other, the other restraint that we're talking about is an enclosure bed. It looks like a giant playpen. They work really great for peds patients, that, um, but it has a top. Um, so that's another type of, of uh, restraint that you can use. And then you have your chemical restraints. So those are like your sedation. 
So when do you use what restraint? Let's talk about that. When we look at restraints, we really need to focus on this thing called a restraint spectrum. And what it is, is you can move, it's a, it's an, this principle that you can move back and forth along it um, as you need to, to properly restrain the, the patient. The, the big thing that you want to focus on is using, on when you use restraints is you want to use the least effect, the least aggressive, but most effective type of uh, restraint possible. So you're least aggressive. So you're going to have like mitts falls in here. They're safe. They still have their range uh, to, to use that. You can use those. Then you have like your soft wrist restraints. And then you also have your posy somewhere in here. And then you have like four points, it gets more in here. And then you have like your chemical restraints. The other thing too, is sometimes you actually start to go up this most aggressive as you combine these. So if you have a patient that's got mitts and a soft and posy, um, soft wrists and, and they're in four points in their chemical sedation, you are the most aggressive type of restraint. So what you wanna try to do is work back down this way. You want to use them the least aggressively. It also worsens um, patients that are combative. The more aggressive you get, because they start to feel uh, like claustrophobic. So, so if you want to use, if you have a patient that's trying to pull out lines, try mitts first. You want to try this one first, and then okay, look, they're really trying to pull with one arm. Then maybe one restraint. But what you need to remember is this is not like a one size fits all. Some patients do okay with a single, some patients do okay with a combination. Um, but what you want to do is you want to use the least aggressive, but most effective type of restraint possible. But the big thing to remember is that you can go back down on the spectrum. Um, so if you need to, like, let's say your patients and soft restraints and you want to get them out of soft restraints, what I would do first and recommend is that you loosen the restraint, but not disconnect it. Don't take it off because you'll see if, so this is, these are your kind of restraints that you're looking at. So you've got your, like your wrist restraints, you've got your four points. Um, there's another one that we don't, I've never actually seen this one in practice. Um, but your posy vest does the same thing. It's come up, comes up here and it keeps your patient in bed. But what you can do is like, let's say your patient's in two points, right? So let's erase these. So let's say your patient just has bilateral wrist restraints on. Instead of totally taking them off, just loosen them. You're going to see if this patient has a breathing tube, you're going to see if they're trying to grab it. If they're trying to grab it, then keep them in place. As long as they're not pulling at lines or they're redirectable, you can loosen them, give them a little bit more leeway. That'll really help with, uh, keeping your patients calm and allowing them to be restrained without hurting themselves. I want to touch on this really quickly. This is kind of a principle between violent restraints and nonviolent restraints. There's this principle behind violent versus nonviolence. The biggest difference that you need to know about violent restraints is that if violent restraints are used for a patient that has an immediate danger, immediate danger to themselves or others. This is, hey, this patient says he's going to, he's going to kill me and he's charging at me. Then, hey, you have, this is totally justified. The problem is with violent versus nonviolent is that violent restraints are typically, um, they're, they're a beast. Honestly, when you have to like document and follow up your healthcare provider, usually has to patient, see your patient within an hour or per policy, you have to assess your patient every 15 minutes. Uh, they're only good for four hours. You have to follow the follow follow policy specifically. Nonviolent are typically, these are your patients that are like intubated or have like standard restraints. Your, your provider usually has to see your patient within 24 hours. You have to assess your patient every one to two hours. You have to, um, it's usually good for 24 hours, but again, you want to follow policy when it comes to violent versus nonviolent restraints. So if you have the opportunity to put nonviolent restraints on your patient, do so because it's it just changes how you handle them and they're typically not as um, restrictive and it allows you to restrain the patient when they need it, but it's not a burden for you. The other thing we're going to talk about uh, real quick is documentation when it comes to restraints. And um, <laughs> this is a big deal when it comes to like uh CMS or Medicare, Medicaid, and the Joint Commission. You have to make sure you have your reason for restraint. You start and stop times, your plan of care. You have to um, restraints as 
because they're trying to pull at lines and that you actually plan on checking the patient. You have to make sure that you're following uh, unit and facility policy. And this is another big one right here. And this will actually come back to get you in terms of the Joint Commission and CMS. If you don't have this documented, you want to make sure that you're checking for skin breakdown. You want to make sure that they have the opportunity to use the bathroom or if they have a Foley or or a, or some sort of other um, like a condom cath or, or some sort of ability for them to void. And you also want to make sure that they have uh, options for nutrition and hydration. You want to make sure that you're still doing their things. Uh, you're assisting them with their ADLs and you're not just putting them in restraints and letting them go on themselves because that's a violation of the regulations with TJC and CMS. So make sure that you are um, checking your patients on offering them toileting and offering them nutrition when they need it and making sure that those things are appropriate and that you have documented them. Restraints are really, really, really about safety. It's a way for your patient to remain safe. It's a way for you to remain, uh, remain safe. So focus on that as a nursing concept for both you and the uh, patient. So let's recap. Know the different types of restraints available. Know that you've got your physical versus your chemical and which ones are appropriate. Um, because restraints make agitation worse, discontinue them absolutely as soon as possible. It's Restraints are not a one size fit all. Use your judgment, uh, combine them if you need to. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've just gotten away with mitts because the patient um, is redirectable and they just every now and then they forget and I can't always be there. Um, and they do suffer uh, the potential to pull out a line. So that was appropriate at the time, but use your combination, um, use your judgment and combine them when you need to make sure that you understand violent versus nonviolent, know the difference and also make sure that you use the right one when you need to, so that a you're protecting yourself and the patient and B you're not creating a headache with documentation, uh, because your, your order expires in four hours and then you're not compliant. So just, just make sure you iron those all out and follow policy. It's really important with the types of restraint. Also document, just don't skip this. Make sure you CYA on everything in terms of documentation that so you follow uh, the Joint Commission and CMS. That's our lesson on restraint basics. Make sure you check out all the resources attached to this lesson. Now go out and be your best selves today. And as always, happy nursing.